The moon was full, giving us more than enough light to pick our way through the trees. Despite the miserable day, our spirits began to rise. As we were finishing up, we heard the faint sound of singing upstream. Each of us pricked up our ears, but the chattering sound of the stream made it difficult to hear with any clarity. But singing meant people, and people meant we were almost to Crossen, or perhaps even the Pennysworth if the swamp had turned us too far south. We followed the stream, Daydan and Hespe still walking as a pair. The sound of singing came and went. The recent rains meant the stream was running high and the noise of it tumbling over rock and root was sometimes enough to drown out even the sound of our own footsteps. Eventually the stream grew broad and still as the heavy brush thinned and opened into a wide clearing. There was no singing any longer, nor did we see a road, inn, or any flicker of firelight. Just a wide clearing well lit by moonlight. The stream broadened out, forming a bright pool, and sitting on a smooth rock, by the side of the pool. Oh, it's will protect me from the demons of the night, Martin said woodenly, but he sounded more reverent than afraid, and he did not look away. Lutz, Dead Anne said weakly, Lutz, I do not believe in fairies, I tried to say but it came out as barely a whisper. It was Valyrian. The five of us stood frozen for a moment. The slow rippling of the pool reflected onto the fair form of Valyrian. Naked in the moonlight, she sang. Kailanion luyao, di mari felanua. Creata tu kia, tu alarandi. The sound of her voice was strange. It was soft and gentle, far too quiet for us to hear across the entire length of the clearing, far too faint for us to hear over the sound of moving water and stirring leaves. Despite this, I could hear it. Her words were as clear and sweet as the rising and falling notes of a distant flute. It reminded me of something I could not press my finger to. The tune was the same Dedan had sung in his story. I did not understand a word of it save her name in the final line. Nevertheless, I felt the draw of it, inexplicable and insistent, as if an unseen hand had reached into my chest and tried to pull me into the clearing by my heart. I resisted. I looked away and set one hand against a nearby tree to steady myself. Behind me I heard Martin murmuring, No, 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 in a low voice as if he were trying to convince himself. No, 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 not for all the money in the world. I looked over my shoulder. The tracker's eyes were fixed feverishly on the clearing in front of him, but he seemed more afraid than aroused. Tempe stood surprise plain on his normally impassive face. Daydan stood rigidly to one side, his face drawn, while Hespe's eyes darted back and forth between him and the clearing. Then Felurian began to sing again. It felt like the promise of a warm hearth on a cold night. It was like a young girl's smile. I found myself thinking of Losi at the Pennysworth, her red curls like a tumble of fire. I remembered the swell of her breasts and the way her hand had felt running through my hair. Felurian sang and I felt the pull of it. It was strong, but not so strong that I couldn't hold myself back. I looked into the clearing again and saw her skin silver white under the evening sky. She bent to dip one hand in the water of the pool, more graceful than a dancer. A sudden clarity of thought came over me. What was I afraid of? A fairy story? There was magic here, real magic. What's more, it was a magic of singing. If I missed this opportunity, I would never forgive myself. I looked back again at my companions. Martin was shaking visibly. Tempe was backing slowly away. Daydan's hands made fists at his sides. Was I going to be like them? Superstitious and afraid. No, never. I was of the Arcanum. I was a namer. 
I was one of the Adamaru. I felt wild laughter boil up in me. I will meet you at the Pennies worth in three days' time, I said, and stepped into the clearing. I felt Felurian's pull more strongly now. Her skin was bright in the moonlight, her long hair fell like a shadow all around her. Sod this, I heard Daydan say behind me. If he's going, then I'm go- There was a short scuffle, ending with the sound of something hitting the ground. I glanced behind me and saw him face down on the low grass. Hespe had her knee on the small of his back and one of his arms pulled up tight behind him. He was struggling weakly and cursing strongly. Tempe watched them impassively as if scoring a wrestling bout. Martin was gesturing frantically in my direction. Kid, he hissed urgently. Get back here, kid, come back. I turned back to the stream. Valurian was watching me, even from a hundred feet away. I could see her eyes, dark and curious. Her mouth spread into a wide, dangerous smile. She laughed a wild laugh. It was bright and delighted. It was no human sound. Then she darted across the clearing, swift as a sparrow, graceful as a deer. I leapt to the chase, and despite the weight of my travel sack and the sword at my hip, I moved so quickly my cloak flared like a flag behind me. Never have I run like that before, and never since. It was the way a child runs, light and quick, without the least fear of falling. Felurian ahead of me, into the scrub, I dimly remember trees, the smell of earth, the grey of moonlit stone. She laughs, she dodges, dances, pulls ahead. She waits till I am almost close enough to touch, then skips away. She shines in the light of the moon. There are clutching branches, a spray of water, a warm wind, and I have hold of her. Her hands are tangled in my hair, pulling me close, her mouth eager, her tongue shy and darting, her breath in my mouth filling my head, the hot tips of her breasts brush my chest, the smell of her hair like clover, like musk, like ripe apples fallen to the ground. And there is no hesitation, no doubt. I know exactly what to do. My hands are on the back of her neck, brushing her face, tangled in her hair, sliding along the smooth length of her thigh, grabbing her hard by the flank, circling her narrow waist, lifting her, laying her down. And she writhes beneath me, lithe and languorous, slow and sighing. Her legs around me, her back arches, her hot hands clutch my shoulders, my arms pressing the small of my back. And she is astride me, her movements wild, her long hair trails across my skin. She tosses her head, trembling and shaking, crying out in a language I do not know, her sharp nails digging into the flat muscles of my chest. And there is music to it, the wordless cries she makes, rising and falling, her sigh, my racing heart. Her motion slows. I clutch her hips in frantic counterpoint. Our rhythm is like a silent song, like sudden thunder, like the half-heard thrumming of a distant drum. And everything stops. All of me arches. I am taut as a lute string, trembling, aching. I am tuned too tight, and I am breaking.